So we're going to talk about functions and pointers today. Functions are going to be very short. You've already done functions in many different ways. I'm just going to explain to you how to pass information to a function, and we'll be done with it. It's a very simple thing. So um, do kind of a review of, of um, uh, have a review of what we have done with the functions. I'm going to bring up the tools that C that we used with the functions that we have written to do our uh, uh, user uh, interface input and output, uh, uh, foolproof input, input and output, we've, we've written a few things. Uh, uh, we explained that functions can be written in many different ways. A function, just by itself, it has a name, it has what it returns, it has what it receives. Okay, And when you have nothing to return or receive, wherever you have nothing, nothing in C is called void. Okay. So you're saying flush keyboard void void. It means it doesn't return anything to another function. It doesn't get anything from any other function. The actions within the logic of the function interacting with the outside world has nothing to do with what it receives and what it returns. So in a function, you can scan something from keyboard and get something from a user and print something as a result for a user, but that function could receive nothing and return nothing to other functions, okay? Again, uh, we understand this because this is the most uh, uh, common mistake that students make. So in a, in a description of a function, we're we'll, we'll, saying we have a function that receives two integers and, ret and returns a double. And you'll see they make the function void and they scan two integers from the user. When you say a function receives something and returns something, it has nothing to do with getting anything from a user or printing something on a screen. Returning means returning a value to another function through the back of the function, the, the void thingy that we have in here. So whenever we are saying returning, returning essentially means this, whatever you have in here. This is what it returns. It has nothing to do with printing anything. Whenever I say a function receives something that I did not give you an example yet, I am talking about the entrance of the function, the argument list of the function. It has nothing to do with what you get from the user. Okay? Again, returning and receiving only applies to data being passed within the functions, within themselves, okay, to make the program work. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, so we have done this. This is the first part. So we, so we actually created a, a, a function. Oh, sorry, that's not the one. <laughs> yeah, we have created a function that uh, doesn't receive anything and doesn't return. So that was the first thing that we, that we did. Then we talked about functions that they return something to other functions, but they don't receive anything. And we have written a get int. What was the get int? Get int was a function that received an integer from the user. Again, it doesn't receive anything from other functions, but it receives an integer from the user and guarantees that that integer is a good integer and returns that value to other functions. So whenever in your program you want to get an integer, you call this function. This function talks to the user, makes sure that the user enters something properly, and, enters and, and returns it to you. Uh, it doesn't receive anything, it's void, but it returns an integer. Anybody have any problem with this? Okay. So the function get int, how is it called? It's called like this. It's a quick review on what we've talked about last time. Function main which returns an integer, receives nothing. The integer rate returns it's always zero to the, uh, and returns it to the operating system. What's that raise? Zero. It's none of your business. We'll talk about it whenever we have the enough knowledge to go through it. But if I want to get an integer from the user, I can simply say over here, printf, please enter an integer. And I don't need to think about how it's supposed to be done as long as I have introduced this beautiful function of mine to my program. I can call it over here and go 
uh, sorry, I have an integer over here. So int value, and I can say value is set to get int. So essentially, I'm calling the function get int and tell to function get int. I am calling the function get int and I am telling to function get int to get an integer from a user and doesn't let the user go if the, if the integer is not received properly. And as soon as the user is sane enough to enter a proper integer, return that value to me so I can put it in this value, a number. <laughs> okay, so return the value to me so I can put it in the number. All right, are we okay with this? How is the function called? You entered uh, percent D, new line, and in here I'm going to put number. Cool. How does this actually work when you actually run the program? The program is running like this. So when the caller program is working, it simply gets to the point that it says call that function. When it gets to the name of that function, the, uh, the name of the function is written with parentheses in front of it. It means go to this function, run whatever it does, get the value, and return the value over here. And that simply turns the execution from this section to the integer get int function. The get int function gets called however it's supposed to. I don't care about how. That's the beauty of it. After you write a function, you only remember what it does. How it does it, you backspace, delete from your brain. That's how you program. I don't need to care about how get int works. That's why I wrote it. If I wanted to know how it works, I wouldn't have written it. Okay? You implement your problem, you solve it, you put it in a lock, in a box, and you don't visit it unless there is a bug in it. Okay, that's how you program. So then this function runs, gets the integer the way it's supposed to. It's foolproof. It won't crash. Whatever I do, it's going to actually get the proper thing. So I'm going to press 34, and it gets that 34, and the value over here is 34. So it returns that value where it was called. Now, if I call this function 50 times in 50 different places, at each position that it's called, it's going to jump to that function, gets executed, bring it back, and so on and so forth. Okay? So it returns the value, and then whatever the value is that is 34 is going to, so it actually comes back to where it was called, which is this line. And as you see, number is garbage in it. And as soon as the line is over, the value will be set to what the function returns. And that's where you say you enter 34. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now, other thing is that, again, as I mentioned, you can do this over and over and over and over. So you can call a function as many times as you want. That's the beauty of the function. You don't have to rewrite it. When you do it, it just works. It just calls it the way it's supposed to, and uh, uh, it reuses the code. And that's how it's supposed to so now if it calls like this, I'm not going to walk through that one anymore. Now I'm not pressing F11. When I get to the execution of this one, I'm still pressing F10. When I press F10, it runs the whole thing as if it's a, it's a statement. It's not going to step into it. If I press F11, it goes into uh, get int. If I don't want it to go to get int, I press F10. As you see, now it actually stops for me to enter the integer. I put garbage. Now I'll put 35. And then it goes to the next one. It says, uh, you entered 45, and now it calls it again. Enter an integer, now I can enter another value. And I hit enter, and then it comes back, prints it out, and it goes again, and it keeps going and going and going. Every single time it's called, it goes back, revisited the same code, calls it, and any, every single time it goes to that function, everything's brand new in that function. All the values that it had before, down to garbage. Remember that. One important aspect of writing a function and writing even a program is for you to understand 
is for you to understand that any time you see an open curly bracket and anything happening inside that open curly bracket, in closed curly bracket, they are all gone. Any variable you create, anything you create, it's as if a program started and it's gone. So even if you have an if statement, some, I have a while loop here. I have, do I have an if statement anywhere in here? No if statement? Really? Where do I have if? Oh, there you go. So in here, if I had int a and I did something, at line 21, that integer will have meaning, and its name is a. And then at line 23, that a will vanish. Remember, an open curly bracket opens up a scope. When the scope closes, everything within that scope that was created goes away. Everything that existed, fine. So it always can see what's outside, but whatever is created inside vanishes when it's gone. And that's the most important fact that you need to understand about a function. When a function gets created at certain, uh, 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 with, with, with an open curly bracket, anything you have over there gets destroyed right at the end. When you come back in, you have a fresh start and everything restarts at the beginning. There is a way around it not to do that. You can actually have some of the variables to keep it old, keep its old values, but it's beyond our pay grade. We'll not, we don't, we're not going to know that now. We'll go, you're going to know it in OP244 or 345 or whatever thing that you're going to go to. Are we okay down to here? Okay, I hope it's like a quick review on how, what we've talked about. So, all right. Um, any question? Yes. In other languages, I know pointers are like methods, right? Ha ha! Pointers? Did I talk about pointers? Shush! No! Functions! 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 Shh! Don't listen to a bad man. Don't listen to him. Okay. <laughs> it's the next topic. It's oh, functions. Yeah. <laughs> what is functions called like in other languages? Is that functions. Process? Function. Process functions. Function. Functions are functions. In languages, at dinosaur's time, they used to call them procedures. In PL1 language, program language one, long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. They used to call them procedures, but now it's, they're all called functions. Okay? Functions, procedures, yeah. All right, the reason I'm saying is that pointer is a completely different story. When I finish with this thing, then I'm going to blend your brain with pointers and you're going to love it. Okay? So just give me a second and we're going to get to it. Yes? Just a quick clarification question on something you said. So if I declare a variable inside, let's say, a while loop, that variable ceases to exist once the loop stops and you go to the next. As, yeah, so the loop goes, 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 and as soon as it's finished, you're out. Because when you are in a loop, you never go out. You're still in the same scope, right? When it breaks the loop and goes out, and then it's dead. it's dead. But remember, in C language, all variables should get created at the beginning of the scope. When you open curly bracket, you create the variables right at the beginning. Okay? That's C language. Because you are doing it in C++, it won't blame you if you do it after. But in a C compiler, pure C compiler, that's not possible. Okay? Everything has to be at the beginning. So if I want to create something in here after the while loop, it only is alive inside the while loop. If you want to do some temporary calculations in a loop and you don't need that variable outside, right? Create the variable right at the beginning of the loop. It gets created only once and it remains the same thing and it's and yada yada yada. Okay? Okay. Yes. Well, if you, sorry, if the you create the variable at the top, but then you adapt the variable in the loop, will it continue? That's fine, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so again, again, a loop, a, any scope that is within another scope, okay, is part of that scope and has access to all the values over there, and all the values remain the same. Yeah, well, but once you finish the scope and the scope closes, will that value that you had? No, gone. Bye-bye. Gone. Okay. When you call the function again, you have a fresh start on everything. Yes. I don't understand uh, everything inside the pointer, all the variables get destroyed right after determining the function. Yes. All right. What if I need to return more than one uh, variable? Then you package it in a structure. Then return a structure. If you wanna, if you wanna return five things out, 
you create a structure that has those five things. When you want to return five things out, logic dictates that those five things are related, right? So you put it in a package that is named after what that package is supposed to be. Like, for example, I want to return a transcript mark. OK, and that transcript has five subjects in it and an average. No, it doesn't need the average because you can calculate it. Whatever, if you, ha you have several different variables in a, in a transcript. And you want to return the whole thing out. And there are like 20 different values in there. You create a structure. You put those, you design the structure to have those 20 different things in them, okay? You create an instance of that structure, and you make your function return that structure. You set the values of structure to what you want, and you return that one thing out. That was a beautiful question. Why? That reminds us that a function is only capable of returning one thing and nothing more. It's impossible for a function to return anything more than one thing. And those wise guys who've studied pointers don't tell me, how about pointers? Can I return five things with pointers? No, you can't. OK? There is no way around this. A function is only capable of returning one thing. Now, that thing of yours could be a package containing 50 things. But still, you are returning that one package, and the 50 things is returned within it. It's, a, it's like I give you a box of beer that has 24 bottles of beer. I'm giving you one thing, one box. It has 12, I don't know, 24 beers in it, but it's one box only. All right? All right. Are we OK down to here? You have a question? You have a question? No. Yeah. You look, yeah, OK. Go. Mm -hmm. Not when they're outside. For example, we have what do you mean, not outside? Like for a loop, when we have, uh, I mean, anywhere you have an open curly bracket, it doesn't matter where. Anywhere you have a scope, what is a scope? Open curly bracket, close curly bracket, some lines between. Even if it's not inside a function. It doesn't make any difference where. It, any scope is within a function. You cannot have something outside of a function. <laughs> okay. Any, anything, like you have a main, inside main you may have five different scopes, right? A scope for an if statement, a scope for a while, a scope for a for loop. They are all open curly brackets and closed curly brackets, right? Anything happening within those things, within a curly bracket, when the curly bracket is closed, with anything inside the scope that was created inside the scope will vanish. Let me tell you, let me show you this. It's, it's crazy that I'm telling you this. I shouldn't confuse the heck out of you. But you can start a scope anywhere. Like I can, I can literally do this here. I can do this, integer a, and do some stuff in here, whatever. And when it's done, and print, and whatever I want to do. And then close the scope. Just the scope by itself. Doesn't matter. I can do that. It doesn't have to belong to something. A scope is a scope. Now if it if it's written inside, if in front of an if, it means that scope belongs to an if. It, it, if it doesn't have an owner, it's just an orphan type of a scope. So if we give a value to A, it's not going to be. There is no A outside. If you come outside of that scope and say A is set to something, it's going to say undefined variable it A. Because at line 19, after line 19, A ceases to exist. It's not there. It's, its lifetime is over. OK? It's something you need to know. OK. And the reason that I give you this general rule is to apply it to a function. When you create a scope for a function, because of this rule, we know that anything that's created in a function will get wiped out. The only way to, to return some of one thing out of these things out is using a return statement. So if you return something out of a, uh, out of a out of a function, it uses magic to return that thing out. <laughs> OK? Let's put it that way. <laughs> OK? That process of how it actually returns something out is a tough thing to teach. So I'm, use, I'm calling magic. OK? Anything that you don't know, you call it magic, right? So that's, that's what it is. So like when I'm saying what I, what I mean is that, like, because I remember one of the smart students of mine said something like this. Aren't you returning the value over there in that function? 
And I said, yes. Didn't you just say that value is going to get disappeared when the scope is over? And I said, yes. So how can you return its value when the scope is over? Because it's already dead. When the function is over, everything's gone. How do you have access to its value? Right? The answer is magic. OK? Let's put so return does magic. Just remember that. What is that magic? We'll talk about it the, uh, when, we ha when we know a little more. So you, like when get int happens and when get int's over, if I'm returning the value out, then that value should be garbage because the value is dead outside, right? So magic. It, it uses it, it, it uses a magic to return. Yeah, let's put it down. Are we OK? Good. Ah, sorcery class. Anyways, uh, so we know all these things, right? Now, now we know how it. How to, oh, and by the way, in in last class we created. In last class, where is the last class? Let's see. Uh, Did I show how to return a structure in a function? I did, right? In a class. Yeah, last time. Did I teach you how to return a structure from a class? From a, from a, for, in a function? I did not talk about it? OK, we'll talk about it now. OK, so uh, 0, 1, function review. Let's see. Now, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> we have it for when you're coming back. So if I didn't talk about it, um, uh, I'm not going to talk about it. It's, it's going to be in, a, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the week that you're coming back. And you have a test over there, remember that, right? So, yeah. Is that going to be the Monday we're back? Or? I don't know. Be prepared when you're coming back. Do you have a study break, right? It's not beer drinking week, people. It's study break, OK? It's not e hop right? It's like I have to go you know, <laughs> study in this week, review the stuff, OK? I know everybody's planning to go to Dominican Republic in next week, but please don't. All right. Uh, what do I want to say? See, I'm now lost my chain of thought. Uh, functions, yeah. So um, what I wanted to say is that, uh, as a quick thing, is just uh, to um, to uh, let me close this, open the other one. So if I have a structure, OK, I have a structure record over here, right? I can put stuff in it and uh, 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 have it as a package and re return that package if I want to. How? I'll explain it. So, OK? Uh, but before doing that, I have to mention something. Now, this tools that I'm doing and using in here, you see the tools thingy, OK? Every time I want to use a function that I used inside, why is it giving, tell me that it, uh, it's OK. Um, whatever I want to use a function in here, I have to come and copy this thing, copy the, the prototype, and paste it in here so I can use it, right? OK. Pardon me? Yeah, well, that's a waste of time. Copy and paste is easier. OK. Uh, yeah, sure, type. Uh, I love the questions. That it, it never, it, I, every semester, somebody asks something that immediately they regret asking that question. Yeah, so, so any, what I'm saying is that every single time that uh, you want to use a function, you have to remember either what is its prototype or copy and paste the prototype. But remember that I told you about uh, the commands that starts with hashtag and what do they mean? Wow, the silence is very reassuring. <laughs> what does include do? Uh, English, please. Huh? That's the fine. Good thing, you remembered something. That's good. So define was search and replace. Well, first of all, we said the number signs, they are not C language. 
they are C compiler language. You're actually talking to the compiler, telling to do something before compilation. And I gave you an example, define sum A plus B. Remember that? Then I multiplied and everybody went, remember that? If you don't, it's going to be on the test. You better remember it. OK? <laughs> so, so yeah, so the define statement is essentially search and replace. If you're telling to the compiler, look for this thing and change it. That define statement at the top that you see again above your pay grade, that's another feature of define that we don't need to know at this moment. But if I, and we have things like this, you had a define for, what was the define that you had in your assignment? Define two, define four, like No, no, you had a define, Def you define. Size. Size. size, there you go. Size it was, so, so you wrote over here something like define, if I can type it, define, and then you write size. Then you write Zeiss. Zeiss. That's uh, version, ver uh, uh, German version of Zeiss. Okay, Zeiss. You say. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if I can write it, size. Seriously, I can't type today. I'm not. It's not. It's on my day. Sorry. So essentially, that means go into the program any place you see S I Z E Z E. Take it off and put 24 instead, and then start compiling. Remember that? And what was the include about? I actually wrote a very cool thing about include, you bad people. What did I write about include? I, I broke my program into halves, two halves, remember? And then included the two piece called one hee ha dot hoo hoo. You don't remember that? I tried to make it fun and stupid so everybody remembers that thing. Yeah, it does import. I said English. Copy and paste. It copies and pastes. Import is too fancy. Okay, it doesn't import. Import means something in programming, in computer science. So that's what we're not. I'm not using it. Okay, it means something. Uh, include essentially copies the code inside the file and pastes it when you see include. Okay. So as I mentioned to you, that standard input output that you see over here that you say include stdio.h, you see that? If you actually go to your uh, uh, go to your compiler place and go to Visual C and go to the directory include, you'll see that all the header files are there. So when you say include crtdefs.h, it takes that code, whatever it is, and brings it and pastes it into your program before compilation. So it makes all the functions that you use, scanf, printf, all those things known to your, to your code. Are we okay with this? Okay. You can do the same thing. If I have tools.c over here, I do not need to remember to type it every single time. So what do I do? I am going to copy this because I'm lazy. Control A, Control C. So I'm copy this, copying this. And in here, I'm going to go to header files. It doesn't matter where it be. I told you this, the things that you see over, uh, the, the, the subdirectories that you see in Solution uh, Explorer, they don't exist. All the files are flattened into one directory. But in here, I'm going to add a new item, and I'm going to call it tools.h. And I'm going to paste that. And simply, I'm going to remove everything in this file other than the prototypes of the functions. Take a look. Oh, too much. Get mark. Get double. So essentially, I have several prototypes in here only. Oh, zip. OK? Capish? I have that. So whenever I want to use any functions that is inside that tools thingy, I'm not going to start typing that thing over and over. All I need to do over here is to say, it, not there, is to say include, but instead of less than, greater than, I'll put double quotes, tools.h, which means copy the content of tools, paste it here before you compile. Therefore, all the prototypes will be known to my functions. Okay, that's the header file that you see. When you include standard input output, magic doesn't happen. 
It simply puts the prototype of printf up there so you can use it. Puts the prototype of scatf up there so you can use it. Puts the prototype of put ch, get ch, and all the things that you do. Yes? If we do that, where we do the like, include tools h, right? Mm -hmm. In one of our workshops and then we submit it, mm -hmm. uh, will it still, even though we don't have tools h uploaded? Are you talking about submission using mine? Well, like it, let's say we no, have. No, no. For that submission thing, you program that some idiot called Fardad wrote it. So that thing, that thing is not intelligent. I have to tell it what files to give me. Yeah. So if, in my, if you want to actually have yeah. something like this added to it, you have to send me an email say, Fardad, I have done this something, done something like this, and I want to give you something special. And then I have to write a specific submission for you, and I'm going to hate you for that. So but, but, but. Yeah but, 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 yeah, but when the time comes that I'm going to ask you to create a header file, then the submitter will not submit your code if the header file is not there. Okay? okay? But that's submitted. It has nothing to do with what we are teaching now. Yes, sir? Include. Okay. Would be indifferent. If you include. Okay. Oh, no, we cannot include. We cannot. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. uh, you, uh, that defies the purpose. That defies the purpose. Now, let me tell you what's going on. That was a beautiful question, people. OK? Oh, and I hate to have to actually explain it. Um, I'm going to try and find. Uh, a, a, a picture that I had in something. It's about C++, but they're all the same. C, C++ compiler, identical thing. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to pause the recording.